All I could see was his face. His beautiful babe's face floating toward me. And in my head was this slow, crazy melody. Like a tune from another world. And then I saw the room. A queer, mirrored room. And somehow I was inside it. There was danger there. I knew that. I wanted to turn and run, but I couldn't. It was as if my brain was handcuffed. But then I had to do what I had come to do. Phew, what a dream. <laughs> Those thumbprints on my throat. They weren't there last night when I undressed. But it couldn't be. That all happened in a nightmare. Talk about your realistic dreams. I couldn't have done it in my sleep. Choke myself without waking up? Key. The things out of the dream. 
I'd never seen them before. They hadn't been there when I undressed last night. The button wasn't mine. The key wasn't mine. But if they were there, it must have happened. The dream, the struggle, the murder, everything. But how could something like that happen and I wouldn't know it? Was I going insane? Across the rooftops, I could see the river. Out there, everything was status quo. The hassle was in here, with me. My stomach was riding a roller coaster. I couldn't face going to work. I didn't want to see anybody. Will you get me Canal 47362? Don't tell me, don't tell me. Troubles you have known. Don't tell me, please don't tell me. I have troubles enough of my own. If you've got a man that you want to keep, I've nothing more than this to say. Keep one eye open every time you sleep. All your man will get away and that's the last you'll ever see of your man Listen, baby, if you're not coming down because you saw about last night, forgive and forget. What Did do you say? Stand? Well, if a guy's sick, he's sick. How long do you think it'll be? Well, I don't know. I'll try to get Pee Wee. What do you say? What's, what's the matter? Four sides we got to cut, and your boyfriend turns up sick. Well, what is it? Did he tell you? Is it something serious? You don't think just because I wouldn't use his arrangements? Oh, Billy, he wouldn't stand up at a session. You know that. It Listen, must be baby. something serious. I know you love the guy. I love him, too. But you got to admit he's a screwball. Well, he's the kind of screwball I like. Have it your way. we got to get a sub. Fat chance. Let's see. Thomas. Pee Wee Thomas. The more I tried to figure it, the sicker I got. Even that weird nightmare music kept tearing at me. Where did I ever hear it before? sudden the room started spinning. Mr. Grayson doesn't answer. Oh, thank you. 
funny the genius shouldn't be there. Oh, Billy. If he was laid up like, you know what I mean? No, I don't. Something awful fishy about this. He can be replaced. Oh, don't do anything rash. Give me a chance to talk to him. What could a lad do? And you guys played that last number lousy. I had to get out of my room. Out into the sunshine. I had to stay out of the shadows. And I knew that tonight, I'd be afraid of the dark. something. Hi. Hmm, now, wait a minute. I've seen you somewhere before. Hello, sis. I was just telling Renee. Couldn't have been ten minutes ago. I was saying if you didn't show up in the next few days, I was going to send out a posse. Just in time for dinner, as if you didn't know. You're staying for dinner, aren't you? Yeah, sure. Hey, you look a little peaked. I keep telling Renee, you don't take care of yourself. Those restaurants, those hours. You feel all right? I'm okay, sis. Well, you look peaked. Just a little tired. Been working today? Recording session. Oh, good. I hope you have a hit. Where's Renee? Now, where would he be? In the garage? Well, you see what he's working on now, my do-it-yourself husband. He gets so wrapped up, he's just as liable to forget about his dinner. So you tell him it'll be on the table in five minutes. Will you tell him? Hello, Renee. Stan. Don't ever creep up on me like that. I'm just liable to cut your head off. How do you like her? Sweetheart, isn't she? Beauty. When'd you get her? Oh, about three weeks ago. Steel. You know, this fellow's wife, she's afraid of the water. <laughs> Say, Renee, I've got to talk to you. Well, I'll just smooth off a bottom. Oh, wait a minute. Something eating on you, fellow? Renee. I've got a real problem. Well, shoot. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to start. You and Gina had a row, huh? Well, I'll fix it up for you. No, I wish it was that easy. Well, what else? You know, you're going to think that I flipped my lid. Last night, I had a nightmare. I dreamed I killed a man. Oh, so you had a nightmare. I don't know who he was. I don't know where it was supposed to be. But it was in some kind of a mirrored room. I had a fight with him. I stabbed him with some kind of a steel tool of some kind. I... Well, during the struggle, a button came off his coat. And after I'd killed him, I'd locked his body in a closet, and I took the key. Well, that was quite a dream. Then, when I woke up, well, look. And this morning, there was blood on my wrist. Oh. <laughs> no, no, listen to me. I figured that I'd scratched myself in my sleep, so I washed it off, but that was before I saw these. You're all to pieces, kid. Renee, you've got to help me. Well, sure, kid, sure. You don't know what I've been through today. Where'd you get this? I told you, I... No, I mean, where'd you first get it before you dreamed about it? You haven't been listening to me. You don't understand what I'm telling you. I didn't have it before I dreamed about it. I never saw it before then. Then when I woke up, it turns out real. I warned you before. You work too hard and you play too hard. 
I know you're a musician and you're high strung with that artistic temperament. But you got nowhere to draw the line. Oh, Rene. And it isn't up to me to lecture you about drinking either, but hanging out in bars to long. Stop long. it, Rene. Look, I wasn't drunk. And I'm not loony. There's a door somewhere. Right this minute, and this key belongs to it. And behind that door, there's a man. Dead. I don't know who he is. I don't know where it is. I don't know how it happened. But it must have happened. And I must have done it. Otherwise, how would it come to me in my sleep like this? And these things. Now, you listen to me, kid. You had these things before. You picked them up someplace and forgot them someplace a long time ago. And last night, you uh, have some chili con carne, or drink too many, and you cook up a nightmare. And in it, you remember these old things, and you weave them in. No, no, now, no. Now, don't say no. Now, either dream a thing or it actually happens. Don't worry. <laughs> you had a battle with a guy, and you rammed something into him in your sleep. You'd wake up all right. It happened, Rene. I tell you, it happened. You dreamed it. You never had these things. Now, look. Why don't you take a few days' rest? You're wearing the nerves thin. Take Gina down to Biloxi. Do a little fishing. That's your answer? Yes. Take a vacation. That's all you can tell me? Stan, Rene, come and get it. Look, Rene, please. If I tell you once more that I never saw these things before... Now forget these things. And not a word of this to Sue, you understand? She worries about you enough. You haven't helped me a bit. Well, naturally not. You expect me to arrest you for murdering somebody in a dream. Well, the rest will have to happen in a dream, too. <laughs> because I'm off duty when I'm dreaming. Come on, come on, kid. Let's wrap ourselves around some chow. Will you do me a favor? Smile for Sue, will you? Darn it all. Keep cracking the polish off that one nail. You like curry shrimp, Stan? You better like them, eh, Sue? Because that's what we're going to have. Stan, why did you tell me you were at a recording session today? Because I was... You feeling better, Stan? I, I thought you were sick. Well, I was. I just wasn't feeling well. I kept calling the room all day, and there was no one there, and Billy got a little bit suspicious. I just didn't feel like working today, and I wasn't sick enough to stay in my room. Why does everybody have to make such a big thing out of it? The blood. I washed it off. I hazily remember coming to for a moment and I felt that I was being carried somewhere. And then I blacked out again. It must have been around midnight that something wakened me. Feel any better? Did I do any talking? Did I say anything? No, nothing. But you scare the daylights out of them. What am I going to do? Sue is sleeping now. I took Gina home a while ago. Did they ask any questions? What do you think? What did you say? The truth? No, no, not what you're thinking. Not that dream business, but the real truth. You've been wearing yourself out. Renee, how can I make you understand? You passed out just like any high-strung guy who's seen ghosts that he made for himself in here. Go on. Keep on talking like that and you'll drive me, Batty. Instead of that, why don't you try and help me? How? You're a detective. Take the key and the button. You've had plenty of cases where you had less than that to begin with. Find out where they came from. Find out what they were doing on me. Find out where that mirrored room is. Now forget them. Once and for all, forget them. I can't. They're all I've got to find out what happened. Nothing has happened. You're just selling yourself a phony bill of goods, just as phony as that nail polish was blood. That's the kind of trick your mind's been playing on you. It can't be that. Now, look, and don't you crack the Sue about this nonsense, or... Uh, well, just don't crack. She's fretted herself about you plenty ever since your mother died. 
I know. Now would be the worst time of all. Now? Why now? Well, I wasn't going to tell you until later, but uh, you're going to have a kid. Oh, that's fine, Rene. That's fine. After being married nine years? <laughs> it's great. So now you know, so forget it, will you? And if you keep hopping on this spooky business, I'm going to grab you and take you down to a head doctor, so help me. Now go on, get some sleep. Sleep? I felt I'd never sleep again until I knew the answer. Four days went by without a lead. I scoured the papers. Not one line about the murder. I couldn't figure it. And all week I'd been avoiding Gina. I didn't want her involved in this horror that kept gnawing at my brain. If something didn't happen soon. That was it. An out of the world melody. If I could find out where I'd heard it, that would give me something to go on. One of my hep friends ought to know that tune. Never met up with that one, Stan boy. Sorry. Man, that's a weirdie. You got me. I guess I lose the six to four thousand dollars. <sighs> Thanks anyway, mate. See you later. It was her, the babe from the mirrored room. I beg your pardon. You say something? I thought you were somebody else. Well, it's not very original, but it'll do for a starter. No, you got me wrong. I, I really thought you were somebody, somebody else. Somebody else. And then I say, is that so? And then you say, yeah. This friend of mine, she looks just like you. <laughs> from the back. Yeah, from the back, naturally. <laughs> and pretty soon, uh, you're sitting down next to me and we're having a drink together. So why don't we just uh, skip all the preliminaries? What was that when you started this? Rye, he says. Two of the same. Thanks. The greatest. Come here often? If nothing happened, I was gonna let one more number run over me and then I was going. If nothing happened. What's your name? Joe. Joe May. Hi, Joe May. I'm Madge Novi. Well, here's to, um, what do we drink to, Joe? 
Sunshine? I'll buy that. Here's to sunshine. Why sunshine? I uh, just like it better than the dark. Mm, me too. Every morning when that sun shines and I'm fine. But by the time night rolls around, if I ain't got something lined up, oh. Honey, you are in a state of the galloping jitters. I'm upset about something. Like to tell Mama about it? You think I lost my marbles? Take a good look around. All kinds of people sitting by themselves, trying to find companionship or maybe a little sunshine in a glass. Sometimes I think we're all minus a few marbles. What do you want, Oscar? Guess he wants to give me another drink. I have a better idea. My place. Call it a place. It's not quite an apartment. It's right around the corner. We can have ourselves a quiet drink there. And you can tell me all your troubles. And pretty soon they'll just fade away. Okay? Okay. It's full of men's clothes And no man to put them on Trying to find a man to love me Before this day is gone A woman ain't a woman She ain't got herself a man a woman ain't a woman She ain't got herself a man There must be a man to love me It's not very big Make yourself comfortable Sit down on that? It's my oriental blood. I like to sit cross-legged and brood. Uh, fix yourself something. I'll be right back. Tell me your troubles now. Hmm? What's the matter? Who is it? Me, Renee. 
Hello, Renee. Still dragging your nose? Well, I've got something downstairs that'll cheer you up. Oh, for Pete's sakes, Renee. Come on, come on. Don't be a mule. Put it on. We're going on the little picnic. I don't want to go anywhere. Well, don't you want to help your sister celebrate? Celebrate what? Brand new car I just got her. Well, that's fine. I hope she enjoys it, but I don't want to go anywhere. You're going to hide in your room like a groundhog. Now, look here. This is Sunday. It's my day off. Susie and I are taking a ride in the country, and she cooked a big pot of jambalaya just for you. Look, will you stop treating me as though I'm cracked? I don't want to take a jaunt in the country to shake the devils out of me, if that's what you're after. Now, do it for you, will you? Don't make her worry. Do you want me to have a baby with wrinkles in his forehead? Come on. And a boy. Oh, now look, Renee, you're putting me in an embarrassing position. Now, come on, don't be a weasel. Go on. How are you, Stan? How are you, Sue? How are you feeling? Oh, me? I'm fine. Good. Swell car. Just another toy for my boy here. That's so. I bought it just for you. Oh, sure. I can't even drive. Stan, this, this wasn't my idea at all, you know. Oh, don't apologize. I'm glad you picked me up. Well, where should we go, kids? Oh, just anywhere out in the country. Any ideas, Stan? What about Bayou La Fourche? Well, Bayou La Fourche it is. Bayou La Fourche. It just popped into my head. Gina and I always preferred the lake, but something made me say La Fourche. Somehow it seemed important. Uh, tell me, um, you know where you're going. No, but I got a hunch that not too far down this road we'll find just the spot with nice soft grass and a cool breeze. Mm -hmm. You ever see anyone so stubborn? The ants around here are just as friendly as the ants farther down. Now, what's the matter with that spot over there? Nothing, but I think the little farther down this All right, then, stop here. I'm getting hungry. Okay, okay, my love, seeing that you're eating for two now. You must be awfully hungry. Want some more? Oh, no, no, no. Three plates were enough. You know, if anybody should ask me, this was the best jambalaya I ever ate. Just like Mother used to make. Well, the jambalaya my mother used to make wasn't half as good as yours. Oh, Renee. <laughs> hey, kids. Lots more to eat if you want it. No, thanks. Stan, when are you coming back to work? I don't know. Billy's been griping all week. I can't work. Can you understand that? I can understand it, darling, but Billy said unless you show tomorrow, he doesn't want you anymore. Well, that's the way it'll have to be. Don't you trust me, Stan? <laughs> Why don't you tell me what's troubling you? I, I know you're not really sick. If, if you love me, please don't shut me out. Forget it, Gina. You can't help me. The best thing for you is to just forget about us. We better go. Oh, Stan, come on. It's going to rain. Holy smoke, you didn't have to take me seriously.
gosh darn wipers are stuck. You should have tried them, dear, before you bought it. All right, all right. <coughs> and I can't stand anymore of it. Let's stop at the first place we come to and get out of this. All right now, baby, calm down, calm down. No houses around here. That bridge. I'd seen it before. But when? There's a cutoff a little way ahead. Just around the bend. There's a big house up there, I think. You know this section? You've been it before? There's the cutoff. Are you going to get us more lost than ever? No, no, keep going. You'll come to it. There's a brick gateway. You turn in there. I didn't know how I knew that. But the closer we came, the harder my heart pounded and the more frightened I got. There it is. Turn, Renee, into the gate like I told you. Key here someplace. Stan, you're going to stand out there all day. Come on in and close the door. Some light. Not that one. What is this, a rib? How come you know so much about this place? It's a rib. Your brother, the great county. Hello? Anybody home? Don't do that. Stan, you're cold. You're shaking. Well, so are you. We better find a place to dry out. Before you get pneumonia. Looks like they've been away a long time. Your being a detective comes in handy there. In case anyone shows up, we won't get into trouble for crashing in like this, will we? <laughs> we'll see what gives with the fireplace. Well, that's a lucky break. It's a gas log.
Better sit down and dry out before you catch cold. Oh, I'm bushed. Must be a kitchen around here someplace. A little hot tea won't do you any harm. That was it. A nightmare melody. It was just that old tune slowed down to a lower pitch. Had I heard it that way before? Was it here? Stan, why don't you come over here by the fire? This is the place, all right. This is the place. Yeah. What do you for it? You got the... Down in a minute. Watch the kettle in the kitchen. I've got some water boiling for tea. All right, but I wish you'd stop poking around. Look. That's what he was crouched in front of that night. He must have been using a blowtorch. That's what made that bluish light. Made her face stand out in the reflections like a mask. That must be the one I... I propped him behind after I... Wait, Wait. Dried blood. Someone who was hurt was in here. 
Someone who is dead. Are you two coming down or do I have to come up there and get you? Freud's Studies in Hysteria, Manual of Psychotherapy, Narcoanalysis. The owner of this house must be a doctor or something. I'll take the tray back to the kitchen. Get on, never mind. I'll take it. The rain ought to let up soon. Why don't you catch yourself a little nap? Do like Sue. Hear about another dream. You think I lied, don't you? You knew how to get here from a dream, didn't you? You knew where the key was from a dream, didn't you? That fumbling around didn't fool me. You knew where the light switch was from a dream. If you weren't Sue's brother, I'd push your lying face out through the back of your head. I told you how the whole thing happened. You came to me for help. But you didn't have guts enough to come clean, to say, look, Rene, I went to such and such a place and I killed a guy. Such and such a guy for such and such a reason. Well, no, you had to cook up a dream. I can respect a man, no matter how terrible a crime he's committed, if he owns up to it. I can respect a man who would deny it flatly. But a guy that'll come to someone, trade on the fact that he happens to be married to a sister, abuse his common sense, make a fool out of him. I didn't, I told like you everything. Like you made of me. Well, I've got no use for him. He's lowered in the lowest track we ever brought in for knifing somebody in an alley. Look, Rene, look. I found this key in my pocket when I woke up. Look, I found this button. Trying to play on my sympathies, weren't you? Trying to get me to think in terms of doctors so as to get you off. Was that it, was it? Rene, Well, I... that was quite a dream. Well, the dream is over. Baby is awake. Now, you're going to tell me the facts. And whether it goes any further than me, that's my business. But at least I'm going to get them. How can I tell you what I don't know? Now, what were you doing in here that night? What brought you here? I was never here before. Who was the man you killed? What was his name? Are you going to tell me? Are you? Are you going to answer me? How can I answer you what I don't know? Why did you kill him? Why? I've handled close mouth guys before. Now, you're going to tell me or I'm going to have kill you with my own hands. Get over there. What is it? I'll ask the questions. What are you doing here? We came in out of the rain, that suit you? Not yet. Identify yourselves and be quick about it. Help yourself. Rene Brissot, New Orleans Homicide Division. Glad to know you, Rousseau. How about doing a little identifying yourself? I'm a deputy attached to the sheriff's office in this parish. Uh, Torrance is the name. It's my brother-in-law, Stan Grayson. Hi. I'm detailed to keep an eye on this place. Uh, I was home having a bite to eat and on the way back to the station. And... Say, how'd you get in here? I thought I had it locked. We found a key in the flower pot on the porch. You did? Well, it must have been a spare. I had the original. We didn't know there was a spare. What do you mean you were detailed to keep an eye on this place? Didn't you know? There was a murder committed here last week. Was there? 
I'd like to hear about it. Murder is my business. Have a cigarette. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, uh, I cut them out about a month back. I always carry a pocket full of these now. And this place belonged to a wealthy couple named Belknap. He's in the importing business. Often goes away on a long business trip. He was away when it happened, uh, somewhere in Mexico. In fact, we haven't been able to notify him yet. His wife was a pretty little thing. Was? Uh, kind of flirty. There was a young duck she used to run around with. His name was uh, Bob Clune. Was? A milkman found Mrs. Yeah. Belknap about uh, daybreak Monday, uh, near the road that leads up here. Dead? Dying. Unconscious. Both legs broken, skull fractured, insides all busted up. Mm. Kind of gets him, don't it? Things like this are new to him, I guess. Uh, about this woman, uh, how did it happen? Well, the car did it. We found it later. Hair and blood on the tires. Bob Clune's car. Then water. That's my chief. Yeah. He comes up here to look around and he finds a safe busted in a mirrored room upstairs. I'll take you up there and show you if you want. Mirrored room? Yeah. Well, that gave us our case. We figured that Clune knew that Belknap had a lot of money in the safe when he went to Mexico. So he came up here and started to heist it. And then Mrs. Belknap caught him. She ran out, afraid he'd kill her. He got his car, chased her down the road, and ran over her. All of a sudden, life was swell again. I don't know how to drive. And Renee knew that, too. Here, Al. Uh, have a smoke here. Yeah, thanks. You got a match? Yeah. Well, that was the case we thought we had till Wednesday. Thought you had? Yeah. We sent out a general alarm for Clune. And then on Wednesday morning, Mrs. Belknap came too. First thing she asked was, is Bob all right? He didn't kill Bob Clune, did he? He? Yeah. What she told us sent us hot putting back here. We found Clune's body propped up behind one of those mirrored doors upstairs. He'd been stabbed with an ice pick or something. She died that night. Well, there went our case. Hmm. Did you, uh, did you get anything on the real killer? Practically everything except the guy himself. She took a good look at him when it happened. Got all the dope over at my chief's office. I was just on my way over there. You interested? Yeah. Who knows, I might even be able to help you find the killer. Glad to have you come along. Thanks. Uh, I better let the girls know we'll be gone for a while. Or my wife. <laughs> You shouldn't let her get you. This is just routine with us. I know. It's just that I'm not used to this sort of discussion. Yeah, I can understand that. I was a little bit squeamish myself when I first started this job. I told Gina, Sue is still asleep. Come on. Uh, I'll stay here. Come on. Isn't that odd, uh, Captain Warner, that they never printed anything about it in the New Orleans papers? Well, they're playing ball with us. That's so? We had the theory if the killer didn't read anything about us finding the bodies, he might come back and take a look. Maybe he'd want to find out what happened to Mrs. Belknap. Yep. This is the description she gave us before she died. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Getting along about that age. I had to get me some reading glasses. Maybe this will help. Thanks. Keller was about 30, medium build, brown hair. His eyes were fixed and glassy. He could have been mentally unbalanced. Have you any pictures of them? This uh, Mrs. Belknap and Clune, I mean. We had some taken in the morgue. Can I have a look at them? Sure thing. Stop raining. Think you'll have that barbecue, Captain? Oh, sure thing. Be dry as a bone by six o'clock. 
Any ideas? No, oh, I just thought it might fit him something at our office. Have a look at them, Stan. Who knows? You might even know these people. It was them, all right. The faces in the nightmare. Now I knew there was no escape. I was a murderer. He went out like a light. What do you suppose made him do it? Looking at the pictures of those dead people? Things like that sure get him. I noticed that before. He's not well. He gets these dizzy spells every now and then. It's only since I... Oh, never mind. Here, take this. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. As soon as I get him home, we'll be 100%. Well, I hope so. Thanks. It's all right. I'll be seeing you. Bye. Thanks, Sue. I'm sorry the rain spoiled the picnic. Take care of yourself, Stan. You too. I'll call you. I'm going up for a minute. You happen to be parked near Hydrant. Well, McBurney's on the beat. If he says anything, just tell him whose car it is. I'm going to take Sue home before I do anything else. I love Sue. I think you love Gina. That's your business. All I know is that I love Sue. Bad enough what this is going to do to her when she finds out. Renee, what am I going to do? Run out. I'm giving you that one last chance. If they catch up with you, I want you to meet your finish somewhere else, not here. If you're still here in the morning, I'm going to arrest you for the murder of those two people. I still don't know what happened. I don't have to ask you if you killed them. You passed out cold when you saw that dead faces in those pictures. I'm going to turn in what I know tomorrow at my precinct house. They can pass it on to Warner. I'll be back in the morning. You better be gone. Faster. 
Got her wide open. Fifteen. You should have let me. You should have let me. Well, I didn't think of that way out. Come on, get up. Oh, Stan. I didn't want to drag you into this. What is it, Stan? If you're in such terrible trouble that you wanted to... But why, Renee? Why would he want to go and do such a... No, never mind now. I'll handle it. Now, you, uh, you go on down and take Sue home. Don't tell her any more than you have to. Tell her that uh, Stan is sick and I thought I'd better stay with him tonight, okay? What, whatever it is, just make him understand now, I'm with him. You go right ahead, will you, and take care of Sue. Did I wake you? What about the arrest? What about it? You're gonna take me down in the morning? What's the sense of waiting? None, maybe. Yeah, have a smoke. No, thanks. Yeah, what I can figure, I give you a chance to run out. Instead, you try to kill yourself. Why? I can't escape from myself. There's something wrong with me. I killed those people. I don't know how or why or how I got there. You should have let me jump. Something wrong with this lamp. Maybe the fuse is out. It happened to the old guy in the next room one night. Yeah? Yeah. He had to use a candle. Same night I had the dream. Yeah, just a loose bulb. What'd you say? How to use a candle? What do you mean? Uh, were you in there with him? Huh? No, no. He came and rapped on my door. Stuck his head in, wanted to know if my lights had gone out. Why did he have to come in here? Couldn't he tell by the hall? I don't know. There is a little night light now. Maybe it's on a different circuit. The night you had this dream? That's right. Tell me everything that happened that night. Anything unusual at the club? Well, we were all keyed up about a recording session the next day. We played our closing number at the club, same as always. He took me out on the town. It was a merry-go-round. Oh, what a spin he had me in. My heart was wrapped up in soul. But when the fire grew cold, the way he threw me down was a sin and here's the kicker i wouldn't bicker if he just wanted me again i'd say fine what's your sad story what's your sad story what's your sad story it can't be sadder than mine took me out on the town it was a merry-go-round oh what a spin he had
had me in My heart was wrapped up and sold But when the fire grew cold The way he threw me down Was a sin And here's the kicker I wouldn't bicker If he just wanted me again I'd say fine What's your sad story? Thank you very much. We'd like to play for you all night, but even musicians have to sleep. Good night, folks. Say, baby, you were the greatest tonight. Thanks, darling. Can I walk you home? You look a little tired, Stan. You feeling all right? Mm, fine. Listen, Stan, what I've is decided it, to use the old arrangements on the recording date tomorrow. Are you kidding? I haven't slept for a week getting these ready. Maybe that's what's wrong. You need a little shut-eye, genius. Well, you can't just throw them out. What's the matter with them? Well, you ask me, I'll tell you. They're too far out. They're not commercial. Who says? I says. You can't hear the melody. If the public can't hear the melody, you're dead. D-E-D, -E -D, dead. And how long are you going to keep playing the same old corn? Just because this stuff is a little progressive, you want to throw it up? Leave it up to the guys here. You played the arrangements. What do you think, fellas? Yeah, he's right, Stan. Too progressive. Too modern. You haven't said anything. Well, you wouldn't want me to lie, Stan. Here, Stan. We'll play the old arrangements tomorrow, the corny ones. Stan? I know you're disappointed about the arrangements. I'll see you tomorrow, Gina. So I came back here to the hotel and... And you came upstairs and went to sleep? Well, no. I was still burned at Billy, so I stopped in at the bar. Downstairs. I thought I'd unwind before I tried to sleep. And this old fellow, Britton, the one that lived in the next room here, he came over and bought me a drink. He was a friendly old duck. Been living here for a week or so. I used to meet him in the elevator. I thought I'd have a brandy, but he insisted a dykery would be more relaxing. You know, I don't like rum, but he was such a nice old guy that I took it just to please him. Mm -hmm. How many drinks did you have? Just a couple. And I came up here and I went to bed. You went right to sleep? No, I read the paper like I do every night. I always read the sports. I just put out the light and closed my eyes when I heard this knock at the door. Who is it? Harry Britton from next door. The second. Pardon me, did, did I wake you? No, no, no. I just put out the light. You did? My light went out. That's what I wanted to see you about. I thought maybe the circuit was off. Your light working? That's right. Yes, I guess it was just the globe that burned out. Sorry to trouble you. Not at all. You're tired, aren't you? I can see you're pretty tired. I'm sorry. No, really, it's all right. You're tired and I woke you up. It's all right. You just got a one-track mind. Used to mumbling to himself, maybe. Anyway, he finally closed the door and I dropped right off to sleep. Now, wait a minute. Are you sure the door closed after him? Did you hear it? Did you see it close? Well, what difference does it make? The door must have closed. He went away and I went to sleep. He was standing in the door there with a candle in his hand, and he kept saying, you're tired. Well, so what? His eyes were fixed and glassy. He could have been mentally unbalanced. What? Oh, I was uh, just uh, remembering something in that deathbed statement that Mrs. Belknap made to Warner. You say you uh, used to talk to this fellow every once in a while? What about? Sports, politics. <laughs> One time going down the elevator. 
He had this box of mentholated cough drops. He kept taking them out and offering to me. Have a cough drop? Go ahead and have one. No, thanks. I don't like them. Go on, they're, they're good for you. No, thanks, really. You ought to try one. Your voice sounds kind of hoarse. I took it because I felt kind of sorry for him. I really hate those cough traps. And you took a daiquiri, too, because he suggested it. Yeah. Testing willpower, maybe. You seem to be trying to make something out of this. What is it? Oh, nothing. Nothing that makes any sense yet. You uh, get some sleep, kid, will you? Where are you going? I'm going back to the Bell Lab house to see if I can get some more information. Now? All the way back there at this hour of the morning? I don't know what I've got, if anything. And no more shortcuts. I should never get here. Well, I was here early this morning. <clears throat> then I had to go back out there again. Yeah, have a look. Well? Who is it? That's Britton, the man who had the room next door to me. Britton is also Louis Belknap, the murdered woman's husband. Then was he the one who? There's no art in this for you, Stan. Not yet. I checked your fingerprints with the ones Warner got at the murdered room. You found your way into the Belknap house. You killed Bob Clune and shoved this body into a closet. And Mrs. Belknap? You didn't kill her. You can't drive. We think Belknap drove you up there and was waiting for you outside. Then Mrs. Belknap ran out and the husband, using Clune's car, deliberately ran over her. But why didn't I know what was going on, what I was doing? We think we know why. There's only one way to prove it. Show that it could have happened the first time by making it happen all over again. You mean go back and go through it all over again? No, not exactly. You killed a man, Stan. Right now you're guilty. What we have to do is prove that you didn't know what you were doing. And why you didn't know. How? What do you mean? Well, we haven't any time to lose. They located Belknap yesterday. He wired Warner to have his wife reburied in the family plot. He'll arrive in time for the funeral. Get your coat on. I was scared sick. 
But I got back into that house before Belknap returned from the funeral. A couple of friends drove back with him. I waited upstairs, looking down into the living room as I said goodbye. Why don't you come and stay at our place tonight, Lewis? Yes, we'd like to have you. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine here. Sure you won't come with us? No, thanks a lot. Good night. He was coming up. I wanted to get out of there, but I had to stay. It was my only chance to save myself. How'd you get here? You showed me the way, didn't you? You remember coming here? You didn't think I would. You couldn't have. Then how'd I get here? You explain it. How long have we been here? Like this? Since just before dark. I got in while you were at the funeral. Who'd you bring with you? Just this. You remembered coming here? You couldn't have. You had the look, the typical look. Of the hypnotized subject? I faked it. No matter how good you think you are. Then why did you do everything I told you to? When I dropped the knife in your hand and told you what to do, you took it. I figured maybe you'd pay off afterwards to keep me quiet. And if I tried to quit then, I figured I'd have found a knife in my back. But what happened? What went wrong in here? I let you out of the car. I told you what to do. I dropped the knife somewhere in the dark. But I came up anyway. Clune was stealing your dough and about to run off with your wife, wasn't that it? Yes, yes. I could have but... been killed by Clune. But just by mistake, your wife put a weapon in my hands. And I had to use it to save myself. That explains why she got out of the house. I finished her with the car. I should have known you were not in control. Oh, no. Your control was all right. You still have the talent. But you just said... Yes, and you fell for it. I didn't know what I was doing when I came up here. And I never would have found you, but I happened to see your face in the newspaper. As the husband of the murdered woman. And I recognized you as Britain. I didn't come back to be paid off for what I did. You couldn't make me murder. I killed that man in self-defense. But now, I'll never be able to clear myself in the eyes of the law. And you're going to pay for doing that to me. Now. This way. No, no, wait, don't do that. I can do something for you. I'll give you money. I'll, I'll get you out of the country. You should have left me alone. Wait. Just one minute. Just one minute to, to make you see. Just 60 seconds. You don't want to kill me. Those two had plotted against me for months. I knew it. That's why I did what I did. I had to do it. Can't you understand I had to do it? You can understand that. He's got him going. Better get up there and cover the front stairs. If you'd suffered the indignities from those two that I did, you'd have done the same thing. Stop it. Just a few seconds, please. You don't want to kill me. Look up. Look up. Please. See? Just 30 seconds. I'm sure I can make you see. Just a few seconds. Shall we go up and take him? No, no, not yet. We've got to let him really put him under. We've got to have proof for a jury that he can do it. Fifteen seconds. That's right, look up. Killing me won't quiet your conscience. You don't want to shoot me. Drop the gun. It's too heavy. Drop the gun. Drop it, Grayson. 
You're too tired to hold it up. Just drop it. You'll feel so much better. Just let go of it. Better still, give the gun to me, Grayson. You're tired. That's better. That horrible curtain closed over me again. I couldn't fight it. Let's get up there. You? Nobody came down those stairs. Well, let's try the other rooms. <laughs> Captain Warner, Broussard. There's a back stairway through here. Better split up. If you see anything, yell. You're guilty. You killed Clune. Give me your coat. Get in the water. There you'll find peace. He's a goner. You all right now, kid? Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm all right. Anything else, madam? Um, I, I, I think I'll have another order of duck. Yeah. 
Hiya, babe. Oh, Renee, I was so nervous I had to do something while I waited. So I ate. This is going to cost your fortune. Well, for Junior, I can afford it. Well, hurry up. Tell me. What did the DA say? I'll have to have a hearing. But with the evidence Renee gave him, he says I'll have no trouble getting a dismissal. Oh, thank goodness. You ought to be very proud of your husband. <laughs> oh, I will be. When he pays his check. Don't tell Get your own. Don't tell me the troubles you have known. Don't tell me, please don't tell me. I have troubles enough of my own. If you've got a man that you want to keep, I've nothing more than this to say. Keep one eye open every time you sleep, or your man will get away. And that's the last you'll ever see of your man. So